Hi, I'm John Neighbor, and I was an unathletic kid, the least athletic kid in my family. We traveled a lot, and the first 12 years of my life, I lived in six different cities. Every two years, we're pulling up roots and going somewhere. When I was 10, we lived in Europe, and on a Mediterranean summer vacation, we took a cruise to Olympia, Greece, the site of the ancient Olympic Games. And the tour guide explained to us that these games were not about winning, they were about glorifying God, doing the best you could possibly do. And anybody caught cheating would have a statue carved in their likeness, put in the tunnel that all future athletes would walk past. That was like a hall of shame. And I thought to myself, wow, this, this Olympic movement is more than about winning. It's about excellence of character, of spirit. So I said to my mom, someday I'm going to be in the Olympics. She looked at me and said, really, what sport? I hadn't even begun to swim. I wouldn't start swimming for three more years. But I wanted to be an Olympian first. Well, by the time I was 13, I found myself in the pool and started swimming. And in 1973, I was one of the fastest qualifiers in the 100 meter backstroke at the very first world championship team trials. There'd been Olympics since 1896, but there'd never been a world swimming championship until 1973. And at the US Nationals, I was the fastest qualifier in the 100 back. And if I made the team, I would be the fastest backstroker and would lead off the medley relay for the Americans almost a guaranteed gold medal. And in fact, in those years, in backstroke, the rule was you had to touch the wall with your hand before you turned around. Now, you don't need to touch the wall to make the turn, but it's just to make it legal. Well, I was so good at doing my tumble turn, I'd spin in the water, and I, I came off the wall ahead of the pack, and I came to the surface, and the official is waving her hand, indicating she had disqualified me. She did not think I touched the wall. I got to the end of the, uh, the pool, I was the first man to finish, and the crowd goes crazy, and I remember looking at the official, and I shook my head. My coach jumped out of his chair, ran over and had a conversation with the official. The head meet referee was there, they're waving and shaking their hands. My coach comes back to me and he says, John, the turn judge didn't think you touched the wall. The head meet referee didn't see any problem. What happened? And now it was up to me. And I said, Coach, I didn't touch the wall. And I got disqualified. I was walking through the parking lot to the rent-a-car when I heard the announcer say, in first place, second place, in seventh place, and in eighth place, disqualified as John Neighbor. I didn't make the team in my best event, the 100-meter backstroke, that would have given me a world championship title. I was very sad, but really it was my fault. I didn't touch the wall. Um, I did a really fast turn, but it wasn't legal. And when I was given the choice, I told the truth. Three years later, at the Olympics in Montreal, Canada, I won four gold medals and a silver for the United States. And people ask me, of what, what, what part of your swimming career are you most proud? Which are the gold medals? And then, to be honest with you, the one moment in my swimming career that I'm most proud of, it's the time I told the truth. When I didn't deserve to win because I didn't follow the rules, it doesn't matter. I didn't try to cheat. I wasn't trying to take advantage. I just didn't follow the rules. And to admit it to an official and get disqualified was a very painful experience. But when I look back at it now, that's the thing about which I'm most proud. So I hope that when I talk to my Ready, Set, Gold school or Franklin High School or any kids and I share with them stories like that, I hope that they remember that, you know what, it may be painful today, but if you tell the truth, when you look back on your life, you'll have no regrets. My name is John Moffitt, and I was on the 1980 and 1984 Olympic swim team. I was fortunate enough to compete here in Los Angeles in the 1984 Olympics, and I am currently living here in Los Angeles. And I've been part of Ready, Set, Gold for a few years now, I think four or five years. My school is Emerson, and I love it. One of the things that I love so much is about telling a little bit about myself, because, well, first of all, we like to talk about ourselves, but aside from that, I, I love Southern California and the opportunities that we have here, and I was afforded one of those opportunities when I was very young. I never thought I would be an athlete. I was not naturally athletic, nor was I especially interested 
and athletics. But when I was 11 years old, there was a turning point in my life. And that turning point was a swim coach saw me swim and said, hey, you know what, you have potential. And he told my, friend, my, my parents, you know, your kid has potential. Why don't you come out for the swim team? So I came out for the swim team and sure enough I did. And that was a magic moment for me. It was a magic moment for me. And I learned in sports, it's a long journey of learning so many lessons. And one of those lessons is the importance of health and fitness and nutrition and in don't doing drugs and don't have bad habits and really, really keep yourself as clean as possible. I, to this day, train probably, I work out probably four times a week. And that's because I, I learned from a bad example, I will say. It was, my dad was, unfortunately, he was overweight. He didn't look after what he ate. He didn't exercise. He smoked. He had diabetes. And by the time he was my age, he was already in a wheelchair. And he didn't live much longer. And so he kind of served as a living example for me what not to do. So I am, I am, I am, I know the importance of fitness and health and eating well and taking care of yourself. Because if you don't, the alternatives are not great. So being part of Ready, Set, Gold has been a really great thing for me as well because it it's keeps, me, keeps reminding me of the importance because I see the kids that I speak to at Emerson Middle School, these junior high kids, and I see them, like make, I, I'm able to make connections with them and they hear my story and the fact that I was once like them. I was just a really normal kid and I just had supersized dreams. And through some hard work and through people that believed in me, my parents, my coaches, my community, I was able to succeed. And that's a, that is a universal lesson for anybody, especially in a place like Los Angeles. We have so many opportunities here. We have the 2028 games coming up. I mean, we, it's such an exciting place to be. So pursue your dreams. If, if you work hard, you can make your dreams come true. It's a, you've heard, heard it again and again, but I am a living example of it. So go Ready, Set, Gold. Ready, Set, Gold 2020 Fall Series is brought to you with support from the Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films.